All right, good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, yes, you can call it a webinar. We won't be offended. Some people out there might be offended by it, but it's okay. Um, it's what we do. <laughs> um, and we do these sessions on Encompass Live every week live at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, all the sessions are recorded, so if you're unable to join us on a Wednesday morning, that's fine. You can go to our website, and we have all of our previous sessions. The recordings are all up there, so you can watch them. The PowerPoint presentations, if there are any are used, are up there. Um, any links and things that people shared are available to you, so everything is collected there for your use afterwards. Um, it's free and open to anyone to watch the live show and the recordings, and we cover anything. Um, anything library related, um, we will. We want to put it on the show. We do presentations, mini training sessions, um, interviews, book reviews, um, whatever um, is library related, we want to get it out there. Um, so, uh, this morning we are talking about, and you can see here on the screen, um, the new health insurance. Um, libraries and the new health insurance marketplace is our official title this morning. And um, lots of big news has come out about this, so we're going to get into what, what has come out, what's going on with it. Um, we have myself and a couple of speakers here next to me. You can see this is Mary Sowers. She is our newish government uh, information services librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. So she's going to share some information about what is out there for librarians to help them deal with this com incoming thing to their libraries. And on the line with us remotely is Kendra Morgan, who is uh, from Web Junction. Hi, Kendra. You can say hi. Hello. Hello. There you Hello. Go. Okay. <laughs> no problem. A little delay sometimes. Hi. <laughs> she is joining us remotely. Um, you're from on, out on the West Coast today, right? Sometimes I'm never sure where you're at. Yes? Coast. Yes. Yeah, I'm based in Seattle. Yes, where's, yeah, in Seattle. So she is going to be telling us about what's going to be available via Web Junction for people. So to get started with this, let me check here. Um, the, as everyone knows, the new healthcare.gov website is available for is well it's out there right now and as of October 1st as you can see here um, consumers will be able to go there to choose um, health coverage this is part of the Affordable Health Care Act that was um, put into place and um, at the American Library Association conference um, last month yes just last month uh, and it was announced that libraries would be available to help uh, customers and um, consumers who want to um, choose their health care uh, there was an announcement made. Uh, it was uh, a little, I think, um, surprising to some people, to some libraries, <laughs> the way it was presented. But it was, um, it's actually a good thing that it, that it was put out there. And um, I think, personally, getting libraries out in front of people and known as um, resources for this kind of thing. Um, this is something, so the, the announcement was made that um, librarians would be assisting consumers, um, not just librarians, though that is just one place that people can go, so that's something to also be aware of, you're not on your own out there, uh, and that there would be training and resources and things put out available for librarians to help them get up to speed with what is out there and what they can be doing um, between now and October 1st, and that's what we're going to get into um, some here. Um, healthcare.gov is the web page for that the patrons will go to um, when they come into your library. Uh, as far as what librarians will do, it's um, just with like as with everything else that you do, you are not going to be required to give people advice, um, tell them what they should choose, that kind of thing. Uh, patrons have been coming, people have been coming into your libraries for years asking for help on filling out their tax forms, uh, filling out their health, their um, unemployment, unemployment benefits, benefits. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, other things like that that are very pr private information. Uh, you have helped them with those over the years. This is the same thing, just another thing that they will be needing assistance in um, being guided to, yes. pointing them to the right page to go to, giving them maybe um, handouts or the right resources that are out there for them. So um, 
it is a huge change to people in the country as far as healthcare. Um, to us as librarians, um, I think it's just another thing that we've always been doing and that we'll continue doing with offering them, you know, directing them in the right place. Um, there will be people, I'm not sure we're going to talk about the navigators and those kind of yes. things. Okay. Mm -hmm. There will be official people who are trained and are um, go through certifications and official trainings about actually giving advice to um, consumers out there. Um, and Mary's going to expound a little bit more on that. Um, and that's the kind of people that you will be able as librarians to refer them to. Um, this is, you know, someone comes in and says, I don't even know what to do. You know, tell me what to do. And you say, Shh, I can direct you to the right place. Um, so there's going to be... Um, I think that takes a little bit of the fear out of it, for me at least it did, Absolutely. as far as we do not have to, as librarians, understand what's the best healthcare choice for some particular person who comes in. They are training people um, to actually do that. Although by the time you're done with it, um, you'll know a lot more than you ever wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is kind of common. That's just, yes, yeah, yes. You, you learn what, you know, what, uh, it's the same questions come in over and over about uh, how do I do this uh, yes, thing exactly. with my uh, taxes and whatnot, and you can eventually rattle it right off the top of your head. Yes. Yeah, you learn the lingo fairly quickly, you know, when mm -hmm. you get the same patrons, or, or, you know, get patrons coming in asking the same questions all the time. Right, <laughs> right. Um, so that's the, the basics of what's going on here. Um, we're not going to get much today into the Healthcare Act itself and what's available and what people can do. Um, that's going to be something that um, is going to be coming out from the government and from some sites we've been mentioning here. We're mainly here this morning to tell you about um, what librarians are going to be doing, what and resources that are out there to help you, things that are being planned. Some stuff is already available, some things are in the works. Um, so that's mainly what we're going to be talking about today are um, those kind of resources, not the Health Care Act itself and what people can pick and choose. Um, that's something that all these resources we give you, you'll be able to start kind of filtering through. Um, and like I said, as we've done with um, all the kind of things that people come into our libraries for, um, sending them in the right direction. Uh, yesterday or the day before, I forget, um, there was a, a letter announcement put out by ALA that I thought was worded very well, and of course I probably can't find it here, but um, we know that the patrons are going to come to us for help, whether we want them to or not, whether we officially tell them, come to us and promote it, whether they even hear about these things that we heard that librarians will be, uh, you know, a first line of defense in helping these people. Um, we know they're going to come in anyways. So the point of this and the training that's being put together and the resources is we might as well be prepared ahead of time instead of shocked and surprised when October 1st comes around. Um, they're going to come in anyways, so let's get ourselves up to speed on this um, before um, the deluge comes in. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so I think that's a pretty good um, basics. And I think we'll switch over to um, Kendra. I'm going to have you pick up next and tell us what's been going on, what Web Junction is doing. I know that was something that was mentioned a lot in the announcements and everything. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm <clears throat> going to uh, give you control here so you can share your screen. Hold on okay. just a sec here. Okay, you should be seeing a pop-up for you to share your screen. There we go. Yep, we see it. Looks good. Perfect. So as Krista mentioned, my name is Kendra Morgan and I work on the team here at Web Junction, which is part of OCLC. And uh, at ALA, uh, at the end of June, June 30th, uh, we were, I was participated on a panel along with uh, Susan Heldreth, the director of IMLS, and uh, the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, Jackie Garner was there as well, as well as a representative from the National Networks of Libraries of Medicine to talk a little bit about everything that's happening around uh, the Affordable Care Act and what was being done to help libraries prepare for that a little bit more and that was part of the announcement to to let folks know that um, we are in the process of creating resources and materials that can help libraries with some of the questions that they're going to see come through the door um, as we get closer to the launch of the enrollment start date which is October 1st and so um, IMLS, which is uh, the federal funder for museums and libraries in the country, saw a need to 
really start addressing this in advance of the launch. And so they've pulled, uh, we've been working together on this cooperative agreement with them, and they have also partnered with CMS to look at how to um, disseminate information to libraries and get them tools and resources that will help with serving patrons. And so a little bit about what's going to be happening at Web Junction and um, in terms of supporting these needs is uh, we are going to work both with public and state libraries in the collection of resources and materials that can help library staff uh, to help patrons with questions that come in about the ACA. We know a lot of great work is actually already underway, and so we're going to try and capture some of these stories and use them as examples of how libraries may choose to work with patrons locally. And I think one of the things that Krista mentioned early on is that every library has to decide locally what level of involvement they can commit to. Every librarian, if someone comes in and says, where, where am I supposed to go to do X, it doesn't matter what the question is, is you know, generally going to get patrons to the right place, and this is no different from that. Um, what they may start seeing are different types of requests, like, can you help me complete this form? How do I know which plan I should sign up for? <clears throat> and that's where the library staff is going to have to look at their options in terms of connecting patrons to a deeper level of resources. And one of the things that will be available um, through another program uh, through the CMS is called uh, the Navigators and Assisters. And these are going to be people in every state that are trained and qualified to help people look at their options. So one potential opportunity for libraries will be to partner with those organizations to maybe offer one-on-one -on -one training sessions in the library or scheduled group informational sessions. And all of those details are still pending. We don't know exactly what those programs will look like, but part of the key role that we want to make sure we play with those groups is to encourage them to reach out to libraries as potential partners. A lot of libraries have meeting room space, they have laptop labs, um, dedicated computer space areas that could be a perfect community resource for some of these opportunities for people to learn more about um, the coverage options that become available to them on October 1st. So it's kind of working both ways. We'd like to look for ways to make sure that, that people working on this project know about the strength of libraries and how they might be able to partner with libraries and for libraries to look for those opportunities as well. So that's one piece of it. And we're also working with an organization called Zero Divide, uh, based out of California. And for over 15 years, they have been working um, with technology in underserved communities to help improve outcomes in areas such as health or education, civic engagement, and workforce. So a lot of things related to digital inclusion. And they are going to be e-health subject matter experts uh, in this work and helping with the development of resources that can be used by state and local libraries to determine how to engage. So we are looking now at uh, collecting information about what will be most valuable for libraries to have uh, in these for these types of tools to be developed. So we were just down there in San Francisco meeting with their team on Thursday and Friday, which was great because this project really just launched on July 1st. So we're really excited about the work ahead. and We know people are very interested and eager to learn more. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> the page that's up uh, right now that's showing on my screen is the new eHealth section on Web Junction. And so this is going to be where we start storing uh, information about the project, and so there's just some basic facts about the uh, agreement that we currently have with IMLS. We also have some um, frequently asked questions. Uh, one of the things that we heard a lot about, what's available now, and there actually is a lot of great information available both on healthcare.gov, which is the public-facing site. That's where people will actually apply for coverage on October 1st uh, for those libraries or for those states that are participating in the federal exchange, which is the case in Nebraska. And then there's also information, um, there's training resources that are available on marketplace.cms.gov. And this is an opportunity, and again, this is, this is an individual choice, but if you want to learn more and dig in a little deeper to some of the information about the Affordable Care Act and how um, it might impact people, there are training materials available for trainers to use that information. 
So we have started keeping track of these questions, and some of these are, came up at the ALA conference in June, and we'll keep adding to them as we have more information available. And one of the important things to understand is the uh, we, we're going to be talking a lot about October 1st, and that is the first day of open enrollment period. And anyone who wants to receive health coverage by January 1st will need to submit their application by December 15th. So there could be a um, more activity around that time, but they really don't know. Um, so it's, it's a little up in the air how many people are going to be walking through the doors or what kind of impact you might see, but the, the window is actually October 1st through the December 15th for January 1st coverage, and the enrollment period stays open until March 31st. Um, and there are more information about, about this project um, or about the timeline um, available on the uh, healthcare.gov site if you're interested in learning more about that timeline. In addition to uh, being able to learn more through this site, we're also collecting questions if people have them, as well as an email address uh, and contact information. If you want to be notified when new resources are added to Web Junction, you can complete this form, um, as well as if you have any questions. So questions that we receive through here are also going to be part of uh, the FAQs that I just demonstrated um, as an opportunity to um, share uh, if we see, see enough of that question, we'll try and answer them and, and keep them up to date on the um, on the eHealth page. And this is that healthcare.gov site, uh, which is it's really helpful. Uh, it has a lot of really uh, good information available. They have a glossary of terms if something's not familiar to you, and you can also sign up for updates through healthcare.gov if you would like as well. And right now, if you go to Web Junction, um, the eHealth page, such as webjunction.org, is under the uh, hot content there on the right, so you can have quick access to it. So, Krista, that's about um, most of the information I have. Are there any questions that I can answer or things that would be helpful to clarify? Um, great. No, thanks, Kendra. Um, actually, um I believe you're going to be read. Can you talk about the new the webinar you're going to be doing later this month? Redoing I can. Anyone? Yeah, just to let yeah. people know that that's coming. So on July 26, there is a webinar which is filling up very quickly, as in I think it will be full by noon today. Oh, okay. um, it's <laughs> unprecedented interest, which is actually really exciting. You know that people are really uh, interested in learning more, um, but it is um, also available on Web Junction. Uh, under the upcoming events, um, libraries and health insurance. So that's on the 26th at 11 a.m. Central. If you can't attend that day or registration close, we are going to create an archive that will be freely available within you know four hours of the day of the session. So it'll be up that afternoon. And that will include the same panelists that participated in the ALA session. And most of the similar content and a few additional updates you know, of things that have changed since we we uh, presented at the end of June, but we will look to schedule things uh, moving forward that allow for some uh, regular updates and sharing of tools and resources. Great. Yeah, that's what I wanted to make sure. I know a lot of people, not everyone is able to make it to the ALA session. And I, during it, while it was happening, I saw tweets and things on Facebook coming out um, from people who were there, but also from people saying, what are they saying? What are they saying? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we're really happy to be able to do it again. Yeah, and like yeah. I said, the, the archive will be available. Sometimes, you know, people can't get away from the desk at any particular time. So the archive is always a great option to go back and review. And we right. will take the questions from that session and answer as many as we can uh, during the Q&A period, and then anything else we'll try to get through um, follow-up uh, on the website. Great. Okay. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I think the stuff that um, uh, Web Junction has put together here is really good. I've looked through some of it, a lot of very useful um, explanations of things, and um, since knowing that the you are the ones that are you know connected with the IMLS and ALA deal, uh, knowing this is a place to go for that kind of librarian specific um, yes. uh, resources and information is really good and what Mary is going to show is something that's 
not librarian specific, it's uh, professional assister specific, I guess, <laughs> yes. and specific Nebraska. So thanks so much, um, Kendra. Um, I'll just stay online in case you have any questions or things um, as um, near the end. Can do. Yep. <laughs> cool. All right. I am going to pull back control here to us do so that... Yes, we are. All right. And I'm going to hand over to you, Mary. You can take over. Yeah. Thank you, Krista. Um, and good morning, everyone. I just wanted to um, say welcome. And hopefully some of the information that I'm going to give you today will help you, if anything, become more um, familiar with um, the websites that are available now um, so that you know, when you do start to get questions from consumers and patrons, um, about the insurance, um, the health insurance marketplace that you will be able to be very comfortable and um, a little bit maybe uh, ahead of the game in pointing them to where they need to go. So um, this, this health insurance marketplace is actually the official logo, so you're going to be seeing that a lot <laughs> in uh, the coming months. Um, but what I put together here is just a really quick reference guide, first of all, with what I consider, especially for uh, Nebraska, the three websites that you're going to need right away. Um, and then um, for uh, everybody in the country, the first two websites, marketplace.cms.gov and healthcare.gov. Those two are for everybody, and that's, uh, those are probably the two that everyone is going to need to be the most comfortable with. And I'm going to go through each of these one by one um, to uh, navigate a little bit through them, point some things out so that you'll know where to go very quickly when someone asks, or you know, show people the websites and um, kind of demonstrate uh, what they need to do once they get on. Uh, this is not necessarily you need to do this for them, but you need to you know, get them pointed in the right direction and then they can take it from there. The first one I want to talk about is marketplace.cms.gov. That's um, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services.gov. And I am going to... Yeah. There it Pop is. Up a new one. I messed up Mary's organization by popping up a, a new tab. And that's quite right. <laughs> Not a problem. Believe me, I did a whole bunch more than that when I was putting all this together. So this is the uh, what I consider the professional uh, website that um, librarians and professionals will need to go. Whether and professionals, I mean, also um, some like agents and navigators uh, might find this uh, website interesting as well. And of course later um, agents and navigators are going to um, have a little bit more in-depth information on their end. But to begin with, this is not a bad place to start. And, but for librarians especially, this is the one that I consider more professional. And um, there are uh, three main categories. Um, the first one is partner with us. And um, this is, um, like Kendra mentioned before, uh, ways that you and suggestions uh, for the ways libraries can partner with your community organizations. Um, maybe you have some organizations who are becoming navigators and counselors. Um, and so maybe you can work with them, get suggestions for how you can work with them to create programs um, for the organizations to come speak or maybe like during tax season um, here in Lincoln at the public libraries we have an organization that comes and uh, actually helps people fill out their uh, tax form for free. So this might be a way for you to set up a program like that with someone in your community. Okay. Um, the next one is get training. Um, this one is uh, actual training materials like presenter slides, video presentations, Spanish language version, uh, video presentations and, and uh, presentations themselves. And um, also too, uh, down here at the, um, under related links, and this is also in news, if you were to, if you look up news on this website, um, there is a health insurance marketplace training schedule 
um, for a, a Marketplace 101. So if you're not familiar with how this um, overview picture works and you don't have a really good grasp of it, this is a great place to, to, uh, to get that. Um, Krista and I uh, yeah, was setting. Say, we attended the one that was just um, the last, last one week. on July 9th, and it yes. was very good. It, um, if you're wondering what's up with the Health Care Act and what is really available and what's going on with that, the stuff that I said in the beginning we are not covering today, yes. this is the thing to um, attend. It's a one-hour webinar, um, and it was very, very useful. Yes, clear. it was. Yeah. gave us lots of ideas as to where we needed to go to you know, try to start pulling together some information. And they do accept questions and things during it as well. It's not they just do. a um, talk at you and that's it um, that's presentation. Correct. They were accepting questions from us as librarians, wanting to know what are we supposed to be doing, what can and can't we do. Um, so they it's a back and forth type thing, so That's definitely very correct. useful. And you know, without going into too much detail, one of the questions that we had very specifically that they did finally answer at the end was, mm -hmm. are librarians expected to be navigators and or counselors for the consumer um, patron? Right. Coming are, they like, in? are they required to be trained or certified to do this? That's correct. Yeah. And the answer is no. Nope. <laughs> um, librarians really are doing what we do um, anyway, and that is to guide people to the right information, not advise them. Mm -hmm. So librarians are not expected to be certified navigators or uh, counselors. So uh, that was the you know one specific question that we had. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know this webinar in general is uh, very good for an excellent overview of how the whole program is going to work. So I'm going to go back now to um, the uh, marketplace, CMS marketplace, and um, this uh, get official resources is actually the most important uh, section of this whole website because this is where there are lots and lots of publications, articles, research, um, some multimedia ideas for you. Uh, widgets and badges that you can use in publications, logos and graphics that you can use in publications, Spanish materials, other languages that are available, and there are actually quite a few other languages that are going to be available so that everyone's needs are served, and then other partner resources. So uh, one thing I wanted to point out under uh, publications and articles is that there are actual brochures out here that you can pull up and print off for your patrons and, and uh, people coming in asking questions. And of course, cool. this one is not going to come up right away. <laughs> It'll get there eventually. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> Let me try just doing that one again. Now, normally, these just pop right up. Um, but these are being a little slow today. But anyway, they are brochures that you can pull up and print out and have ready for your patrons. Um, and there are also fact sheets. Uh, like, for example, this first one is key dates for the health insurance marketplace. Again, this is something that you, it's a one page that you can print off to have um, on your reference desk or on your circulation desk as people walk by. If you have an information table, you can put this out. You can put all of these things out on your in information table or your little brochure slots, um, along with the bus schedules. You know, um, things like wh what happens when. You know, like for example, in uh, here in July. Well, actually, back in June, the marketplace uh, was open for business uh, for people to call. And uh, this month in July, you can begin to set up an account. Um, and you can also sign up for email so that you can get updates to the uh, marketplace and to new things that are happening. Um, things aren't happening daily, but I have found that things are being put out uh, weekly. Uh, announcements are being made weekly as to um, documents and things that are being that are available uh, that weren't available the week before. So this is just an example of a fact sheet that you can print off uh, for your patrons. Um, again, and another fact sheet, um, and you could either put these all together um, or 
have them out at specific uh, individually so that people can, if they, you know, don't, if they're not interested in the timeline sheet specifically, they can go to uh, things to think about when choosing health plan. They can get a little bit more specific. So these are just um, ideas uh, for you to use um, in how you want to present information to your um, patrons. Um, lots of other fact sheets uh, for you to choose from. I won't go through all of them. Um, they have examples of what the consumer applications are going to look like for the health care. Um, and these are only to be looked at right now. You cannot actually submit an application until October 1st. But, um, Every piece of information that I've come across says um, try to do as much of this in advance. You know, so if your consumer or your consumers and your patrons want to know what can I do now, point them to things like the applications and um, the things to think about, and uh, because there will be specific pieces of information that they will need to uh, sign up. Uh, so. It's like collecting all your receipts and everything to prepare for doing your taxes. Yes, every absolutely. Year. You can't yes, just necessarily jump in and start filling out your tax forms. You've got yes, you have to have all. stuff, yes. resources, and information ahead of time. Yes, you will need names, birthdays. Like if you're an individual, you'll need your name and social security number and your employers and your employer history. Uh, if you have a family, though, you'll need every person's names, birthdays, social security numbers, and if they're of work age, then you'll need all of their employer information as well. So um, do point them to, you know, what can I do now to um, prepare for doing an application? Now, I want to go back to my slide here um, just to do a, a, a quick overview. Um, the marketplace uh, through CMS is generally for professionals. Um, it does include partners. Um, not a lot of information there yet uh, as to specifics about navigators and counselors for state, but there is a sample application out there under partners for um, how navigators or how people who or organizations who want to become navigators and counselors um, can apply for that. Now, in most states, from what I can tell, they most states already have this process going, mm -hmm. uh, and they have granted. Um, they are accepting applications from people, but not everybody has them listed out there. Mm -hmm. um, there are training presentations, like I mentioned before, overview, um, a training 101 that we showed you, shop, which is the uh, business owner's um, health care plan. Now, and going back to the partners thing, um, mm -hmm. I think I'd seen somewhere. Now, as we said, librarians are not required to be trained, certified, or anything. You're going to be doing your usual job, as you always have, or just leading to the right place. Yes. But if you, as an individual, wanted to become one of those yes, counselors, you could. you could, separate from your job as being a librarian at your library, yes. go and figure out how you can possibly, if that's something you're interested in, apply and go through the training to be certified to do that. Yes, that is wanted. absolutely right. So if your library is... Um, wanted to have an in-house person, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, to come in, say, after hours, and, you know, you have a, a particular interest in this, yes, an individual could train um, and apply to... Uh, That's like what Kendra was saying, each library has to decide themselves how much they're going to get yes. in the involved in this whole process. That is absolutely correct. Right. Um, I've shown you, you know, some basic of the uh, official resources, brochures, fact sheets, articles that you can read about this whole process of the Affordable Care Act and the um, federal health care and how the whole program is going to work. Um, there is a uh, frequently asked questions um, here at the top and that takes you to this page and gives you a little bit more in-depth in answers as to what are health insurance marketplaces, also known as exchanges. So you're going to hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and how do consumers apply um, and premiums, uh, when, so timeline, you know, things like that. So uh, frequently asked questions is another place. Uh, that you can go and that you can also um, direct uh, patrons to go. 
Um, you can also um, sign up and join the various groups. You can sign up for email. And let me see if I can, yeah. Uh, it says get the latest partner news or um, if you want official resources. Um, and actually the whole, the partner and the training and the resources all point back to this same sign up for email. So anything that show, new that shows up on this website, um, if you've typed in your email address here and submitted it, you will get the latest update. And uh, I have not actually done it with this website. However, I did do it with um, the next one that I'm gonna talk about but uh, in healthcare.gov. But again, you can sign up with email. They also have Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So you can uh, stay up to date with the very latest. And um, the next one that I want to go to is healthcare.gov. And I didn't, I went backwards. <laughs> um, for uh, just, this is the quick reference page, the, the CMS marketplace, healthcare.gov is the general website. Um, they have a 1-800 number that people can call now. And for the um, hearing disabled, um, you can, they do have a TTY number um, that you can have give out as well. Um, so, so far as a phone call, this um, organization is uh, up and running right now, okay? So let me go back to, and then this is the website, healthcare.gov, and it is divided into individuals and families where you can um, investigate your options um, and ask questions. There is a live chat going on at all times. Um, it is also available in Spanish. So uh, people have options right off the bat. There is a very small um, little YouTube video about, I want to say it's about nine, no, it's about two minutes, uh, just under two minutes um, for, you know, some basic instruction. Um, there is also a small businesses. And again, it's the same type of format, see your options, uh, live chat. And you can, again, on all of these, you can do um, Twitter, Facebook, email, and if there's anything that you want to print out, you can do that. It, it is also available in uh, Spanish. So there is an all topics. So when you just scroll over that, you can uh, pick and choose the topics that you want. Um, and this is probably going to be the website that you will use the most once you get yourself oriented uh, through the CMS marketplace, this is the website that you are going to use the most with your patrons because this is where they will need to be to sign up for insurance. Um, so going back to the main healthcare.gov, uh, if you do start now, um, it will give you some options. Like if, for example, you want to find out uh, what types of insurance might be available to you, you can go through a series of questions and get some ideas uh, as a consumer as to what plans are available, what your costs might be, and uh, options on um, how to get one or the other or both. Yeah, so. Um, Go back to this one. Um, and like I said earlier, the, the CMS marketplace is for the, prof for the professional, more or less. Um, the healthcare.gov is for consumers to learn about and buy insurance. This will connect consumers with the correct exchange or the correct marketplace for their state. Now, for example, Nebraska consumers will enroll through healthcare.gov. And I um, want to be sure and show you that from the main web page, if you scroll down right in the middle, there are three questions. What is the health insurance marketplace? Basic explanation of the, how the whole program works. The next one is what is the marketplace in my state? And uh, if you click on that and then scroll down and select your state, like for example, um, Nebraska, it tells you point blank, if you live in Nebraska, you'll use this website, healthcare.gov, to apply for coverage. Okay. And then it will say, learn more about the marketplace and how you can get ready. 
that that'll be the next step you know for a consumer now the uh, what I did just as um, an example because I kind of knew who some of our um, attendees were going to be here this morning I also uh, checked out um, Virginia to find out uh, what their exchange would be uh, they are also using healthcare.gov um, I I looked up New York and partly because we have an attendee and partly because my husband's from there yeah Chris is from there too and um, um, it says if you live in New York the New York Health Benefit Exchange is the healthcare marketplace uh, for that will serve you and then it gives a link visit the New York Health Benefit Exchange now. So, the, so in that case, New York is hosting their own. Yes, that is correct. So that's an example. Yes, New York is, is hosting their own, and they will. Uh, they have some basics um, pretty much similar to uh, the healthcare.gov. What is an exchange? Information, news to keep you updated as to you know, what's new, what's latest and greatest, and then um, how to go about signing up. So. Um, the other one, uh, just out of curiosity, I did look up Colorado, having come from there you know, just a few years ago. They are also hosting their own exchange. So again, they give the, um, the link to that, and then once they get to that particular link, it walks them through uh, what they need to do. That's great. So people don't have to search around and figure out from their own state. You can go to the main one state, main website, yes. healthcare.gov, and then it will lead you to whatever your local. That's correct. Is. And that's probably nine times out of ten uh, what libraries are going to be doing all over the country is um, going here and pointing them at and using this as a general overview and then pointing them in the right direction as to where they actually need to go to, to apply. Um, now, for Nebraska specific, uh, I wanted to touch on uh, the Department of Insurance. Um, at, I'm in doing look, lots of looking, trying to find information for librarians here in Nebraska. Um, I checked with both the uh, Department of Health and Human Services here in, in Lincoln and also the Department of Insurance. The Department of Health and Human Services is so far does not have anything out on its website and when I called absolutely has no plans yet at least that they're not announcing uh, yet to put anything out on their website um, they are uh, referring us to Department of Insurance so if you have something specific to ask that you cannot find an answer um, either online or uh, through one of the specific marketplace websites, then the Department of Insurance uh, would be the way to go, at least as a starting point. And I have listed their telephone number here um, and also too on the first page where I had all three websites just uh, as a quick reference. Now um, the Department of Insurance uh, website does have um, some information. It tends to be more technical and more uh, document based. Um, it is also, I think, intended to be more for navigators, agents, and um, insurance providers, but um, a lot of the pages are still under construction, especially navigation, uh, navigator and uh, agent pages actually say, say this page is still under construction. Uh, when I called them uh, about this, they said they do not have a list of navigators or agents or counselors for the state of Nebraska yet they don't have a time specific uh, where they will have that ready and out there on the website but it will be there by October 1st and I did ask specifically you don't have it now but will it be there by October 1st and she said absolutely <laughs> so um, and um, she also referred me back to healthcare.gov and so until the states actually get completely up to speed with um, their navigators and counselors um, for, uh, for their state. Um, they are referring everything back to uh, healthcare.gov. And, and at the moment, that's probably an okay thing just because there is so much more to do to provide information. It's just not available yet. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, I did, uh, like I mentioned earlier, called DHS, uh, the Health and Human Services. They referred me to, to Department of Insurance and also, again, back to healthcare.gov. And um, the Department of Insurance, uh, I would also want to mention that if you have a patron come in or call that actually is like from an organization that is interested in being um, a navigator or counselor, mm -hmm. Um, I would, first of all, refer them to the Nebraska Department of Insurance or whichever state that you're in. Uh, if that information is not already out there, uh, I would uh, refer them back to the Department of Insurance you know, for your state uh, because they will have the guidelines that, and the applications that the navigators need. So. And And this is just a really quick look at the Nebraska Department of Insurance. Um, it's really kind of an interestingly uh, set up site. This is the main page and um, it's not readily noticeable when you go to the main DOI page. So if you were to do doi.nebraska.gov or it just in a, in a search put in ACA, then this web page will come up. Um, at, for the federal health care law. Um, it, when you, it has consumers, agents and navigators, which is not complete yet, companies, and then um, marketplace individuals and small business. Um, if you, when you click on consumers and health care providers and then back to the left for Affordable Care Act information, it comes up with a list of uh, articles and to read. If you click on that same button at the top for consumers, but then come down to federally facilitated marketplace, it comes up with a different list of items that are uh, specifically about the federally facilitated marketplace. Um, so, you know, go back and forth, uh, play with it a little bit, find out what information is there, but I definitely wanted to give you kind of a heads up as to uh, what uh, information is out there and uh, help you uh, navigate, at least have you look at what it looks like now and, and be able to navigate it a little more easily rather than if you've got somebody standing in front of you and you're trying to, have, trying to learn how to do this. So, uh, there is one other thing that I wanted to mention and um, this is, I, I actually signed up for emails from healthcare.gov. This was the letter that I got in my email uh, welcoming me to the health insurance. And again, it's a quick um, reference for the consumer, um, points them to the website, uh, what they can do to get ready now, uh, answers a few questions, um, have them follow on Facebook and Twitter, and then um, also there are uh, specific videos that this particular email points them to. And uh, the CMS marketplace does very similar things. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, sorry, I signed up for that too. And, and almost every week I've been getting something. So they're being very proactive, which I think yes. is good. With, yes, that is very consumers, true. With here's something coming up, here's something to think about, here's some more information about something or other. Um, one other thing I wanted to tell you uh, that I think uh, most libraries are going to probably find, and unfortunately, you know, because all the states are not up and running with their navigator and counselors list, mm -hmm. I wanted to use as an example um, New York because they do have theirs up and running. And I think this is what um, most states are going to look like in some form or other um, eventually as to the type of list that um, people are going to be able to refer to as far as organizations that are available. And where is it? Okay, I apologize. Yeah. Um, they actually have um, a map of all of the navigators by county. And then when you click on 
the county, and I believe it might be under available here. If you click on the county, it will it lists the in, in New York, say for example, Monroe County. Uh, there are two organizations um, that are available. Yeah, I'm not finding it, but. Um, New York was a, a good example of where they already have a navigator list out there and a counselor list out there. There were two organizations in this particular county that I looked up that are already um, on board and ready to um, help the consumer. So, well, that um, makes sense since they already have their own website and they yes, obviously exactly. decided when this yes. act was first um, put into place that we're going to do our own thing. Let's get going with this. Yes, so that's maybe correct. they probably start a couple years ago. Yes, <laughs> they may have. organized. <laughs> yeah. But those are some of the basics to, to get people started so far as um, working around the website so, and getting comfortable with them so that uh, when uh, patrons and, uh, come in or uh, call with questions, uh, mm -hmm. they, they'll know where to point them. Yeah. Uh, there's one other resource that I um, I didn't come across. I, I was told about. Um, um, if, if you may have noticed, the people who are speaking or spoke at the ALA webinar, um, one person, Ruth Holst, is from the National Network um, Libraries of Medicines for um, the Upper Midwest. She's out of the base of Chicago, and she's going to be speaking again on the one that Web Junction is doing. So I contacted our local person from the National Network um, Libraries of Medicine, mm -hmm. which is Marty McGee, which some of you may know her. She's at the McGugan Library mm -hmm. um, up in Omaha um, to see, okay, what do you got going, Marty? And she's like, we don't know yet. But <laughs> <laughs> um, she says, we're working on stuff. It's coming. Don't worry about it. But she, what she did say was, and this is something you can look up here, if you go to Medline Plus, um, which is a resource that they refer to people to a lot, because um, it's from the National Libraries of Medicine, um, and do a search on, um, once you get there, there's Midline Plus, yep, mm -hmm. on, on Affordable Care Act, then they've collected all of their resources that they have right now, so um, on um, anything that's going on with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you scroll down, you can see there's some results there. There's kind of a little explanation at first, and then uh, over a thousand different resources. But um, this is what, um, for the National Libraries of Medicine, they're directing people to for now, she said, was, we've got this information up there. There may be more coming. Um, we're still working on it. But this is another resource that you can use that's being specifically put together um, yes, for exactly. anyone out there. And Midline Plus just out there publicly for everyone to use. So yes, you, you can use it. You can website. send your users to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and maybe we'll get more information from Marty later. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. um, information is definitely coming. Oh, right. um, and uh, Kendra touched on this and, and Krista as well, but um, it's just that, um, you know, they've been working on this for a while and then a lot of the states didn't decide uh, one way or the other whether they wanted to be host their own exchange and they were the deadline for that was extended and so now they're um, the ones who have decided to be their own exchange are having to kind of play catch up a little bit and then also and then the ones who are not going to host their own um, are, you know, developing materials to point everybody back to healthcare.gov. Yeah. So. But more information is coming, like I said earlier, almost on a weekly basis. Yes, things have changed since we started looking at this last yes, week. <laughs> exactly, yes. Um, In fact, yeah. the healthcare.gov website changed literally overnight. Okay, it, yeah. Yes, it did. And as Kendra said, um, you know, they did this session at ALA, and yes. now the one they're doing this month is going to have new stuff in it because things new, new information has already come out. Yes. Um, so, you know, we knew this was coming. Uh, the Health Care Act, you know, October 1st is the big day. The announcement was made at ALA, and we decided here at the Library Commission we wanted to get something out right away at least to let our librarians know here's what's out there here's what's coming here's what you can use right now to get yes. something get a head start on it mm -hmm. so we didn't want to wait until you know, September October so yeah, exactly. jump right yeah. on yeah. so that's why we do have some good information some things to come mm -hmm. um, but yeah so anything else? I think that's it. okay all right does anybody have any questions um nothing came in while we were all talking which I never know if that's good or bad uh, <laughs> we're so good there's nothing to ask or um, Nobody knows what to ask. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, type them into the questions section of the interface, and I will um, uh, mention them. Um, Kendra, do you have anything else um, while we're waiting to see if anybody has any questions? Anything else you wanted to add? No, I think this is great. I'll have to use some of these tips to uh, update Web Junction. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. We're happy to have you do it. <laughs> 
Well, and while we're waiting for any questions, um, I'll, just to let you know, I am the government documents librarian here at the Library Commission. And um, if you go to our website, I'm listed in the directory. If you ever have any questions, feel free to give me a call anytime. And uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll certainly find out for you or point you in the right direction to the, to the person who does. Mm -hmm. And uh, so feel free to call the commission anytime. And for other states, I know we have people that watch our show from across the country. Um, I have heard other librarians saying, librarians have saying various things that I think my state library is working on something. I've heard there's going to yes. be a webinar coming out. That is so um, check and see what's being um, done in your state for your local. Like, you know, we talked about what's going on here specifically for Nebraska, the Department mm -hmm. of Insurance here, what we know our details. Right. Um, check in with your state library yes. or um, at your state your department network of insurance. And see yes. if they've mm -hmm. got some training or resources coming um, that they're working on getting out there um, that's um, specific to you guys. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like any questions came in, so I'm going to say we did an awesome job. Yeah. <laughs> or we scared them into um, um, silence. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's really not scary. No. At first, it, it seemed like it might be, but uh, mm -hmm. once you really get um, out there and start looking, you know, there there's lots of stuff to look at, and it's easy to navigate. I will say that much. It is it is relatively easy to navigate. Yeah, it's it seems like there's a lot of information out there, which sometimes is a bad thing. Yes, too much. That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, but it's good to get this. Um, a demo from you of where to go to yeah. find all the information. Yeah. Certainly for the and basics. I think for. Um, some people in the libraries, they were scared that the whole part about how do we, how am I supposed to tell a person what to do? And just as I said in the beginning, something to be very aware of, just think back to what you do with anything. You don't give someone legal advice. That's you right. don't give someone personal advice on how to do their taxes. Right. You direct them in the right place. That's what librarians mm -hmm. do. And we know this. It's, 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 it's in our blood. We know how to do it right. And it's the same thing again here. Just a new thing that people are going to be coming in and asking about. Right. Um, do have a comment here from Dave Mixdorf up at South Sioux City Public Library. Hi, Dave. And this is true that we have seen some of this discussion, um, some controversy. Um, there are groups, people out there who are just in general opposed to the Affordable Health Care Act in general and are complaining that libraries are being involved, that ALA librarians are pushing this, are um, have chosen to you know support this and they don't support it so they're against your library now that's just something to be prepared for um, as Dave says uh, it's just like anything we as librarians we don't control the laws we just provide access to the resources that's I'm sure right. you've had controversial um, things to deal with in your library in the past oh yes absolutely. so just do be aware and I'm sure maybe you'll do know that not every not every single person in the country is on board with the health care affordable health care act um, that you may have to deal with that kind of issue from some of these people that come into your library and uh, as a Thank former uh, frontline circulation desk person uh, in a public library uh, when someone came up and said something to that effect to me my answer was, I'm not here to disagree or to agree that it is public information. My job is to provide the information if asked so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and point them in the right direction. So. Yeah, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anything else out there from the audience? Questions, comments, ideas, thoughts on what you're doing? It is all very new to all of us, so we're all just getting going with it, I'm sure. Yeah. And we're going to be hear lots, hearing about it a lot more in, uh, yes. in, the, in the few months to come. All right. Uh, nothing Asian has come in. I think we will wrap it up for today. Um, thank you very much, Kendra, for being on the show. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, yeah, sorry. I apologize to everyone for the little technical difficulties we had this morning. We started a little late, but I think we did pretty well getting caught up and getting everything Absolutely. done here. Um, got some thank yous coming in. for Thank you for the information on the, on the chat here. Um, you just have been in Compass Live. I didn't get this set up. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, very much for attending this morning. Um, the show was recorded, so the recording will be available well, later today. Uh, whatever it gets processed. Um, I have Mary's PowerPoint and I have all the links and the websites that were mentioned, the Web Junction links, the things that Mary shared um, have been collected into our delicious account so they will also be available when the recording goes up as well. Um, 
So that will wrap it up for today. I hope you'll join us next week when our topic will be the new Digital Public Library of America, a new resource for our communities. Um, this is a new resource that was launched a couple of months ago. I forget exactly. Was it March? Um, sorry. And um, where it can collect um, re links to um, digital resources that are out there in libraries all over the country. And uh, Jamie Hollier, who is on the director of one of the Board of Directors of the Digital Public Library of America is going to be joining us to talk about um, this and what's going on with that. So, hope you'll sign up and join us for that next week. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a Facebook user, please do feel free to go over there and like our page. We post announcements when our sessions are available, when we've added new things to the show, to the schedule. Um, I remind people every Wednesday morning that the show is um, starting and they can join in when they want to. We do have, um, you can register ahead of time to join our show, or you can just join us on the fly Wednesday mornings. We post up the login information. So, um, and when recordings are available, we'll post it there as well, so if you're a big Facebook user, please go ahead and like us on Facebook. Other than that, I think we are wrapped up for this morning. Thank you much, yeah. Mary. Yeah. And thank you, Kendra, Kendra. And everyone for attending. Uh, thank you, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.